Welcome back to another Warframe video and I'm going to be showing you guys the beginner's guide of the update 30.5 new update obviously the sisters of Parvos and I think there's a lot of people that don't really know a lot of stuff that's in the game right now uh, that you can get right now um, between Helmuth, the tenant weapons a lot of other stuff etc I'm going to be showing you guys other videos that I've have made for people that don't know how to actually do certain things and do certain like this and um to help you guys move on faster in the game so sometimes i will be explaining some stuff in the game but uh yeah i'm going to be helping you guys out with that so let's go ahead and start this guy for you guys and make sure you watch until the end of the video so you understand one more else that i needed to tell you guys is that Watch to the end because there is going to be a playlist for you guys for update 30.5. There's a lot of stuff in there that you need to know. Everything that it, it's literally there. All right, from uh, galvanized mods to uh, how to get your lich started and how to um, hollow keys, and we're gonna explain all that in this video as well. But not most of it. You guys just go watch that video on your own because I'm not gonna be explaining that much in this video, but. It will help you as you go on so first starting off with all your tenant weapons every tenant weapon is in here and you will be able to get all these weapons all right and some of them are from uh, your parvels the lich starter all that to some of them you do need to purchase from somewhere else and I will explain that in a second but starting off you have your melee weapons which we'll talk about that more later then you have your lich weapons all right your tenant weapons that you can get from uh the lich starter and then it moves on to your sister all right so you need to defeat your sister and that will be in the playlist at the end of the video so you guys have more understanding of how you get your lich started and how do you take down your sister's sister yeah <laughs> but um envoy you have tenant envoy tenant tetra tenant archiplasmor tenant flux rifle and these are the primary weapons so the only thing that we have never seen before is the tenant envoy the tenant envoy is a massive tenant rocket launcher the uh corpus rocket launcher all right this is a tech weapon and this one is definitely one i think people love the most because this one is different from the Koval Ogres or the original Ogres. And the Ogres is basically a rocket launcher as well. But the only difference is, is that this one can... Um, every time you aim, there is a laser beam. That, that laser beam can control the rocket launcher. So wherever you want to hit the enemies at. Or wherever you want to control the rocket. And hit it a different enemy or enemy that's too far away. You can do that. Alright, you can control your rocket. It does a lot of damage. And um, you guys are going to probably love this one. I think it definitely has insane crit, uh, really good status, and some pretty good crit multiplier at, this, at, at the same time. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a weapon you want to get your hands on. It's a mastering 16 weapon, so I think most of you guys are not mastering 16. It's going to be very disappointed, but sometime you will reach this rank where you are able to get this weapon. The Tenet Tetra is another great weapon. Um, a lot of people have really enjoyed it because it does do some insane damage. It does nuke. It does do um, some pretty good uh, crit damage. You can definitely build it for crit. You can definitely build it for status. Either way, it's going to do amazing freaking damage. All right. It does have obviously a semi to it, so it does have a secondary alt fire mode to it where you'll be able to do uh, more damage. The only thing is it takes up a whole lot of magazine, and yeah, it's, it's very, very annoying, but amazing weapon at the same time. So I definitely think you want to get your hands on this as well. Uh, Archiplasmor, the Tenet Archiplasmor, all right? So we have a weapon in here that is the same thing, uh, but this is the upgraded one. So I think the crit chances might be the same or maybe increased. But uh, we do have more status, I think so. Um, fire rate is 
near it's the same actually and magazine is the same uh some of some of the stats are going to be the same but uh, I think the difference between the tenant and Archiplasma is that the tenant can do way better. It has, I think, the same range as it does. <laughs> Let's see that quick, actually. Because um, the Archiplasma was never really doing... Not, okay, so it has more status on the tenant, more crit multiplier on the tenant. It did not have that range though. The tenant actually has that range, so it took away the slower fire and reload speed for the greater range. That is one thing that came with it. Another thing you can actually do with the tenant Archiplasma is that it bounces off surfaces, and that's one thing that is very cool about the tenant Archiplasma. So you can hit your enemies, you know, different ways, really in different ways. It just bounces off surfaces. And it's cool. It's it's actually a really cool thing to do with the tenant archiplasma. So definitely this is this is one weapon you want to use for a lot. You know, it does amazing damage and is very cool. So definitely have this in your inventory. And then we have the tenant flux rifle. The tenant flux rifle is definitely um, pretty cool. It has changed though. It's not like the flux rifle even though yes, it is But the thing that they changed is that it's doing um, increased fire rate and it, Exactly what it says. It's a fire rate weapon. It's a it's a, um, a Rapid fire weapon. All right, so it's not doing any more beam, you know type of weapon. It's really just switched to uh, like a rapid fire weight weapon, you know, so that's the only difference between the flux rifle and the tenant flux rifle now But overall still good damage. It still does um, I still have to put the works on this weapon to see um, How good it is, you know, I'm not really not really as far as there yet Obviously it does take ammo like I said, it's a rapid fire weight weapon. So it's no longer gonna be charged like the Psychron can but yeah I mean it's not a bad weapon so I would definitely aim for something that you want the most out of the least weapons you don't want the most you do have your four tenant secondary weapons alright the tenant Psychron is definitely one of amazing weapons which I'm not gonna be talking about these weapons for long I don't want to take up too much of your time but uh, forty percent status, twenty percent crit chance. It's actually pretty a good weapon. Definitely, you're gonna be having your galvanized mods on there, so increased damage you're gonna be doing, especially for arcanes as well. Tenant Detron has definitely uh, made its way into the game, which I did not expect this weapon to actually be a secondary or become a tenant weapon, but it has. It's not bad, but like I said. Focus on a more most weapon you want instead of a least weapon you want. You know, try to go down that list. Spyrex is definitely an amazing weapon. It has some high crit chance you can do, some really good status damage you can do. Um, it has heat damage, a lot of damage you can do with this weapon, especially on headshot. That's what you really want to aim up to, you know, and it says speed up reload. So that's one thing I really do love. It is a rail slug weapon, so it's kind of like the Ephona Prime, where it does slug shots. This is the same thing, although you're going to be doing more crit damage than the Ephona can ever do. Last but not least, you have the Tenet Diplos. The Tenet Diplos is a dual weapon, alright? Now, this one is different because when you aim, it'll auto-lock on the enemy and it'll shoot projectile um, missiles basically uh, when you're not aiming it's just it's a fire rate rapid weapon you know so uh, pretty good crit chance it has it actually has really good crit chance um, not bad of a status good fire rate good crit multiplier good not such a bad reload speed but base damage looking as well so pretty good weapon overall 
these weapons are definitely what you want to aim for and then you have your tenant weapons which we'll get to that in a second a lot of people do not know this in the game yet i don't know why i don't know how but there there's people that don't know where to actually get these tenant weapons the tenant melee weapons all right so if you are in your orbiter you want to go to your syndicates right over here located in your front of the right the left side actually of your ship you want to go here go to appearance sequence and it says visit on the bottom go ahead and visit them and you'll arrive right in front of the well i honestly well argo glass that's his name <laughs> i was gonna say i don't even know his name it's argo glass so you have your four tenant melee weapons you have the tenant gregory the tenant livia the tenant exec and the tenant agendas so pretty dope weapons the only two weapons i have right now in my possession is the tenant exec and the tenant gregory so this weapon tenant gregory is a scythe weapon all right if you're not the type of person that does not like scythe don't go for this yet i will wait until you really focus on a weapon you want first before aiming for you know your less weapon that you most not desire for than you know the weapons you most desire for that the thing that catches your eye you know so this one definitely caught my eye i mean it has pretty good crit chance pretty good status high status actually um decent crit multiplier uh the thing is with these tenant weapons is that it's not going to buy the warframe you use to put on a bonus element it actually rotates so the weapon rotation changes in eight hours so it's on a time limit where it'll change the element so you get a bonus element of electricity for the tenant weapon you want it'll switch through sometimes it takes a long time for the bonus element you want at the perfect time so yes it's going to take time for you to purchase because of these bonus element that is switched through every like um maybe like a week i think so yeah very difficult that's pretty annoying but it is what it is Ten Olivia is a two-handed Nakanas, and if you don't know what a two-handed Nakana is, it's just like the Tatsu and the Pennant. All right, uh, definitely two amazing tenant. Not sorry, two two-handed Nakanas we have in the game that are pretty dope. So crit chance is really nice. Crit multiplier is nice. The status is nice. Um, by the way, these tenant weapons do come with amazing uh i guess just say special effects and one of them is like tenant gregory can do this it it basically shoots out this um this ring of fire and it kind of ricochets off of enemies and basically it do a lot of slash damage on them a lot of damage basically because of its you know base damage and what it does basically all right so it's basically on heavy slide attacks you can um launch a spinning energy disc that's what the tenant gregory does tenant livia all right i'm not for sure it says block attacks have chance to increase the blocking angle um that it seems like that's what it does so i'm not really for sure what the livia does yet but overall it looks like a really good weapon I'm just not into the twin anacondas yet. Moving on to the tenant exec, I do have this. And on tenant exec, you can do heavy slam attacks, which unleashes a swath of shock waves. All right, so uh, definitely on heavy attack as well, it'll release a shock wave, a huge shock wave. All right, but the difference is from heavy slam attack and the um, if you use on like it's a it's a button you have to push to do the second heavy attack and basically you just have to press a certain button which hopefully you guys have figured that out so for me i had to push r3 because i'm on playstation it'll do a different heavy attack heavy slam attack between the other one that you do when you press the o button to actually do one heavy slam attack and it's not doing like a uh more i don't know advanced heavy attack so hopefully you understand what I mean, but some of you probably won't. But I can definitely say the Tenant Exec is one weapon that I got first because of its crit chance. Uh, if uh, the status was actually pretty good, 
the crit multiplier is pretty good as well base damage wise is not so bad and yeah that's really just it all these tenant weapons can do amazing damage it has its own amazing um abilities you know tenant agendas is why well, i haven't got the weapon yet this is what i want to get next crit chance is 24 percent crit multiplier is 2.0 status is 20 percent so pretty good stats we have over here base damage is only the impact so that's not going to be great on our side we do want to do more like base damage like puncture or slash but impact is not going to be that bad especially for corpus and um that's really just it agendas has a impact hammer so basically this one you can do heavy attacks and it launches a devastating energy disc and it'll hit the enemy uh with a hard attack but keep in mind you do have to build up your combo multiplier have it at a max combo multiplier to release that damage and it'll kill your enemies pretty quickly it'll do a lot of damage so that's the difference between all these tenant melee weapons moving on to galvanized mods if you want to know where you can receive or get your galvanized mods the new mods for primary and secondary and shotgun weapons as well you can go visit the arbiter of hexes again you can fast travel if you are in your orbiter so let's go ahead and go there once you enter in you want to go up here by the door this guy is what you want to see the arbiter tracing honors so in the honors scroll down you'll be able to see all the galvanized mods they all cost 20 vitus essence each and well grinding for these galvanized mods are going to be a little bit annoying but at the same time it's not harder between uh hollow keys and farming for corrupted hollow keys which we'll get in a second so um let's go ahead and show you guys how you can farm for these if you are in your navigation right now you will notice that you see arbitrations all right this is how you farm for vitus essence all right uh that's probably what i'm gonna tell you there that's really just it if you want to know more on this uh you can obviously wait till the end of the video you'll have a playlist there or you can go on my channel and there'll be a playlist there for update 30.5 sister parvers look through there and you'll see how to farm the galvanized mods video and it'll tell you everything about the arbitration and yeah that's really just it it'll tell you everything how to get your mods okay but you do need to complete your full star chart all right the all the planets in order to actually do the arbitrations now you don't need to do steel path mode that's not it you need to complete the original star chart in order to actually do these missions moving on to the arcanes for the steel path this is another way to increase damage for your primary and secondary weapons uh shotgun as well but the, that goes along with primary because shotguns and rifle weapons are part of primary weapons so we're gonna gonna want to go into testing once you have been in the uh steel path or testing once you have arrived here you want to go to the steel path honors scroll down actually here it is the primary arcane adapter and the secondary secondary arcane adapter so if you do look on your weapon it shows you a arcane adapt or arcane it says you can use but you need to have a arcane adapter all right so primary secondary you need steel essence you need 15 steel essence to purchase at least one now the only problem with this i think is overpriced because i'm going to show you obviously if you purchase 10 steel essence which i can't even do right now because i don't have enough 10 steel essence well sorry 10 arcanes if you were to purchase 10 arcanes it costs 150 steel essence now 150 steel essence you can purchase with is the umbra forma which is already <laughs> something that is way too pricey in the game and that rotates through the steel path weekly 
purchase rewards. So that is already pricey in the game. And that is moving along. That is very pricey as well. But um, maybe for you guys who are starting off with the Steel Essence, maybe I would say purchase at least five each for your primary secondary so you don't actually waste a lot of your steel essence because you're going to want some of that for steel essence but i do have a couple of videos out that'll help you through steel uh, farming for steel essence with uh warframe builds and weapon builds and you know a lot of other stuff that you want and want to need to know how to farm these so furthermore information on how to get your arcane adapters and stuff and um, knowing everything about the steel path, like I said, the playlist that I have for you that's going to be at the end of the video, or you can go on my channel and check it out for yourself on the update 30.5 Sisters of Parables playlist that I have set for you guys. So here's what I've been talking about the corrupted hollow keys. These are very hard to farm in Railjack. You need to have, you need to do Railjack missions and Voice Storm missions actually just voice store missions to actually get these corrupted hollow keys now they all are a 37.5 percent drop on the neptune the vil proxima the saturn venus and pluto but there are different ways to actually do this and there are different different drops for these because it's all about the amount how much do they drop so Vil Proxima is the only planet that drops the most hollow keys and Vil Proxima is very a little bit too hard but if you do stick with a certain mission it won't become as hard as possible so here we have a Vil Proxima mission up right now and it's an extermination mission now a lot of people do do these because you get seal sorry six uh corrupt the hollow keys from this but it's a low drop so it's it's pretty difficult to do uh, or to get these hollow keys because of the low drops but at the same time it is uh very very useful you know it's it's helpful it, this is the only mission that you will be able to do to speed through it in order to get your hollow keys but at the same time it's all about how uh how good is the drop how low it is and it's it's it, no it's very annoying so it takes a while to farm but Vil Proxima extermination missions is what you want to do you can also do Pluto as well if you don't see a Vil Proxima up these this gives you a five corrupt hollow key drop all right so you'll gain five hollow keys uh, six hollow keys like I said for Vil Proxima but still do Vil Proxima for more of the hollow keys you want to get. I know it's one point, but hey, it'll still help you. So extermination missions you want to do, you can do it at least in like 20 to 6 minutes. Uh, depending on the squad you have and depending on if you want to go solo, you can obviously. Uh, if you want to do solo, I do prefer you to use Mesa because she can run through these enemies uh, fairly quickly. So, most definitely, uh, say, uh, Mesa, you want to use. Um, you could do, you could obviously use any Warframe you want. I'm not saying that you cannot, but if you want to run through them faster, Mesa, I guess, that's just my, um, way of saying a faster Warframe to use is Mesa. So, you guys take that information and do whatever you want with it, but that's just my way of how I would do it. We're in Deimos right now, and I feel like a lot of people don't even know this, that there is something available in the game that uh, you can do to increase Warframe abilities, uh, strength, uh, range, or maybe, or efficiency, or uh, decrease something. It's called Invigorations. Invigorations you can get is from the sun. Now, you do need the segment, and the segment is something you want uh, to have in order to actually have access to the invigoration if you go to browse wares and if you go to you know just scroll down uh, you do have your helmet segment for um, switching abilities from uh, whatever ability you're able to switch 
you can do that with the helmet segment but you do need the helmet segment in order to actually do this if you don't have the helmet segment installed then you won't be able to do this at all but you do have the helm hell oh god helmet invigoration segment which is uh how you get putting on like more strength or uh increasing a lot of stuff on your warframes all right so we're gonna talk about that and uh more what else you can do with the invigorations if you go down to your orbiter you have the left and you have the right you go to your left into the helmet this is where you're going to install the helmet segment just to actually switch abilities whatever you want and i'm talking about this if you do not know this you can switch any ability on any warframe except for prime warframes no sorry you can switch them from prime warframes but you can't extract an ability from a prime warframe you can install an ability on a prime warframe just can't extract with the prime warframe all right you only can extract the ability from an original warframe so with that being said this is how you um uh install a ability on a warframe that you want of your choice on any warframes even for prime so invigorations here you have three invigorations you can use for Valkyr, for and uh, sorry, Savagoth and Nyx. So, Nyx has a 250% primary damage increase and 1000 armor. Savagoth gives you 200% ability strength and 75% ability efficiency. Valkyr gives you 250% secondary damage and 200% energy max. So, that's what you could do with different warframes once it rotates around every week. <sighs> On the bottom here, we do have these bullets, all right? And with these bullets, if you get to the 10th bullet, you can actually install one of these three invigorations on any warframe of your choice. You do, however, need to hit this 10th bullet this big one that shines right here in order to actually do that so obviously you do need to feed the helmet first in order to actually do anything before you even put an invigoration on a warframe once your helmet has been fed you can now install your invigoration on your warframe once that has been installed you can now see that the bullet is moving up once your bullet has been moved up, it's going to keep going until you reach that 10th mutated invigoration. That's how you are able to uh, put any invigoration on any Warframe of your choice to increase anything you want. Alright, I think ability strength is definitely one that amazes people because it gives them 200% ability strength. So you can build your Warframe however you want from strength, range, efficiency, and duration. However you want you'll be unstoppable with this type of invigoration increase. You do have new pets in the game like hounds that you can get after you defeat your sisters of Parvos. So once you de defeat your sister, you get an email saying that you have vanquished your sister of Parvos and you get the Celo F. This is going to be the name of your weapon at the, at the beginning of the name of the tenant weapon the tenant diplos for example so you get the celo af hound from the sister that you defeated so there it is you can get um a hound now you can get different hounds that do different abilities that are very amazing i've seen a lot of them that do uh huge beams um they can do laser calls like what volbon can do he can calm down a a beam strike basically and it looks very nice I like a lot of these hounds do different things you also get different parts from a hound and you can actually build your own hound I think from the Fortuna if you go to someone that can uh, build your hound or build like different pets like Moa pets that's where you can use the parts to probably put on a Moa pet or on the hounds 
whatever it is there there is available to you guys um, you can use those parts to make a hound or a more pet I think the last part is just Yureli. Yureli is the new water warframe in the new update so she can do pretty good abilities uh, I've definitely talked about her already and um, she's not such a bad warframe but uh, there was a point in time where she was and not a lot of people liked her. I don't think still people, a lot of people like her because of the not so good damage she can do. So right now, Yureli is not really good a fit in Warframe for a new Warframe right now. And it's actually really sad because it is a new Warframe. And some most of these Warframes that have came out have been pretty dope. They have been pretty good. A lot of people have um, a lot of different... Uh, uniques and talks and the way they talk about them it just sounds really positive and I think this Yureli is probably the most negative Warframe we got in the game right now that has been talked very poorly about so yeah she's not so good at the moment but um, she, she has some pretty useful and great abilities I say so far so sea snares is basically a form 5 water globals that seek out enemies and it's basically a bubble that traps people up and it, it appeal, appels them in the air so you know it goes on duration obviously and it does damage over time now it has been increased from cold damage as well so it'll be doing more damage over time Mar Marlunia or something like that uh, it's basically a summon of a K drive basically it's like a K drive all right she can drive around you cannot build it but you can build it for health like it says 16,800 you have to build it for strength to in order to decrease the health aqua blades is tear through foes with a aqua bladed you know like razor blades whatever you want to call it it's basically what it does so it does not have good range you can build it you can try to build it for range but it does not work at all because the range is minimum all right it's, it does not have good range but it can do a lot of great damage especially slash slash is one of it because it's blades okay riptide is the fourth ability and honestly is i think it's going to be your most used ability because this one is goes from damage and it can do pretty good damage from range it can um pull your enemies in and then once she's uh once she kind of like blows them away not really anymore because they used to fly across the map uh it blows them and then it does a lot of damage one it uh explodes on impact basically so a lot of damage you can do range is pretty good damage is not so bad i think this you really uh not such a bad warframe but you can give her a try now there is a quest for Yureli. you can obviously go to fortuna and see the what's these guys called the vent kids once you arrive in fortuna you want to easily just fast travel to them and it's right over here click rocky which i almost forgot who they were and i don't know why they're called rocky maybe it's because of the name change but click on that and you'll enter the vent kids right there so once you enter they will have you talk to them i guess and uh that's how you get your your quest started so once you have done that then you'll be able to do the quest for yureli now yureli quest is a bit difficult you do have to use your k drive and you can use yureli if you have purchaser from the start or now you can um you can use her obviously because she does have a K drive. So either way, it does not matter. You just need a K drive involved and you have to do a lot of stuff. Okay. So keep that in mind. It's a bit, bit difficult, but if you are a K drive user and you know how to use your K drives, then I think you're going to be pretty set on doing the quest. And from there, that's really just it on this. You do have a weapon, it's called Ambassador, and you do have the steel path weapon that was supposed to be in steel path but is not it's called the cadis that you can also get from the market actually so you can purchase this from the market but the ambassador is going to be different to actually get now i'm not aware of where you do farm this so 
hopefully if someone does leave a comment down below and actually looking at it, it says does it does says entranti so i'm guessing the necrolisk but then again i'm not actually for sure so like i said someone be a good person and comment down below where do you actually find the ambassador at and how do you farm it but that is really it for this video this is everything from really beginning to the end of what what do you want to be when you start out the new update and this is for uh, people that are entering the game and not know what to do for certain things and how to uh, actually get started so a lot of people start with the tenant weapons you know they want to get the best weapons they can to actually start doing steel path because that's what it's meant for uh, second where I will move on to actually getting your mods ready your galvanized mods your arcanes as well that's where I definitely want to start at uh, second thing third is maybe your rally I mean she's not the most important warframe but definitely your rally I guess third thing is you know, if, if you think she's okay and we review the uh, ability she can do, uh, she does have a passive where she does 200 crit on for secondary weapons. That's another thing that's pretty dope about her, but that's really just the only thing that is cool. Uh, the third is, maybe the fourth thing is uh, hollow keys or uh, maybe leveling up your tinning weapons, you know? <laughs> Trying to get uh, more of the ephemeras that's in the game that you can actually get from your sisters so maybe that maybe start working on getting the elements uh focus on those and real well, that's really just it that you can do uh you do have your kuva heck weapons your kuva heck and your kuva grattler those are the two new kuva heck weapons in the game that we did not talk about but they're not really so much important to me because the thing is is that they're not so good by the same time uh there's still weapons you want to get okay so start off with those but that should cover everything um for anybody that's a beginner starting off with the sisters of parvos and i hopefully this did this video did help you for starting off and a lot of things you probably didn't know and have known let me know in the comments below if you didn't know some of these things all right but that's really it for this video if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe if you're new to the channel. Follow me on all social medias and Twitch. Links in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys and I'll see you in the next video.